<clears throat> yeah, so what the heck am I up to today? I'm actually uh, got some dogs out on the ground and uh, just let them run around and get toughened up. I'm walking today instead of riding around on a buggy because I think I'm softer than my dogs. But, uh, so I'm kind of a sad deal I'm in right now. My jazz female, she's, uh, was eight years old and, um, uh, got dogs chewing on stuff. She was, she's, she was eight years old and, and, uh, she's not going to make the return trip home from, um, uh, my trip out here to New Mexico and uh, it was kind of a tragic deal it's my fault I was rodent some dogs and um, she got under a tire and that's always a bad deal um, I lost track of her I didn't even want to tell you guys what that was but you guys will be sending me messages and and asking me anyway Tried to save her, took her to a vet, and she was just too busted up. So, what I'm doing today, and I don't know if you've ever seen how many ashes come from one 50 pound dog, but this is it. And I'm gonna hike her in and put her under the last tree she ever made in her life. She, um, and I'll give you a little bit of a eulogy for Jazz. She's by far the most natural, easy starting dog I ever had. And she was mainly a coon dog for most of her life. She, she wasn't always the best, but she always gave me her best. I mean, 100% of her ability every time. She never quit. Sometimes she should have. <laughs> and as she got older, she started falling behind in races and stuff like that. I switched her over to Bear <clears throat> when she's about six years old. And I'll get to that part. But um, I'll just start from the beginning. I wrote a whole... Hold, I, I kept everything documented on, when I started her from the time I brought her home in January of 2016, 2015, and um, kept it all documented, documented everything we did on the um, UKC message boards, the old school, before the Facebooks got big might not even been on facebook then i don't remember but uh, anyway it's called the blue dog project and if you go to the ukc boards go to the breeds part of that and then search for the blue dogs project it's still archived there but basically what that was was just an everyday running living document where I kept track of everything she was doing. And um, she's out of, she was out of a dog named Wild and Blue Chief. And, um, shit, I should, <laughs> I should have done my homework and my head swimming right now, trying to think of everything I want to tell you about Jazz. Blue River Jewel. Blue River Jewel was a female. And uh, so I started hunting her, just letting her run around the house here. That's how I start with all my pups. And she um, she wasn't doing much. In fact, at five months old, I called Donnie Walston. And I said, man, all this pup, I mean, I'm letting her run loose to try to you know, go find her own way. And all she wanted to do is lay on the porch. I thought, well, this is a, this is a blue tick for you. All she wanted to do is lay around on the porch. And... Uh, 
at four months and I don't know, it's on the UKC board, four months and 30 days. I had some feeders out and I just walk around those feeders during the day. This one was during the day. There's a picture of it, of her treed. But uh, walking back to the feeder, she peels off to my left, not far. The coon didn't go anywhere, but just scampered up a tree right there. And she never, I don't think she saw it go up. She was using her nose from the time she left me. And uh, so she treated her first coon that was not a turn loose. And then at five months and a few days, she treated her first coon just actual turner loose. And that's right there at my house. You guys have probably seen my posts on social media. The, old, the tree that the tree that she treed on um, actually blew down, and I made a post about that. Her first tree. So anyway, by the time she was a year old, I had a goal with her. I saw I saw a lot of potential. I just started hunting her by herself. And I had a goal of treating them 100 coons with her by the time she was a year old. And she did that. Actually looked at them, coons. And that was like on November, or I'm sorry, October 25th, the first year she was alive. And um, from that time, from that time forward, by the time she was a year old, she'd made 100 and I can't remember. It's like 120 trees and I looked at 100, 100 and around 100 raccoons. So she's extremely accurate, deadly accurate. Most accurate dog I've ever seen. From that point on, I went ahead and made her a grand night. Won a lot of, a lot of hunts with her. She was a PKC champion. And uh, about the same time we were pushing big country, we were running around and, and Donnie and I competed head to head before I was a partner on Big Country or before the paperwork was back. And uh, we traveled around a lot. And then at Blue Tick Days, uh, her first year at Blue Tick Days, she was the Young, young Guns champion. And uh, not a great performance, but you don't need a great performance sometimes in those pup hunts. But uh, so anyway, um, I'm, I'm just across, the, across this ravine here from where she treated her, treated the last time. And she trashed on a bear. We were out here trying to line hunt with, with Shorty. And uh, she rigged and I put her down and dropped everything to her. And they ended up getting treated on a bear. And uh, had to go in there and get her. But um, during her competition career, we won the Young Guns hunt. We, we she was a high score in blue tick at blue tick days. She didn't make queen of the hunt, but she had more points than anything else. We had a bad Friday night cast. I didn't realize uh, in the plot breed, they take all three nights. In the blue tick breed, they only take the two sanctioned nights. But she won, on, won the all blue hunt on Thursday night. Came up short on Friday night because of a really piss poor handler that she had. And uh, we had another dog in the cast that I couldn't couldn't tell the difference between her and jazz and uh yeah i got myself scratched and i was carrying the card i just got a i just got a strike up here on the hill while i was walking these other dogs in here with me but anyway so she was just a hell of a dog i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie she was the best i ever had uh, like i said every time go every time she, i mean she just she just absolutely wore me out if I didn't take her. And that's why I started bear hunting her. That's why I started bear hunting her. And, uh, cause she would just give me that look and, and she never, never quit. She became a hell of a rig dog, great strike dog. She wasn't the fastest trail dog. She's a little too slow to keep up with a lot of stuff, but man, she could sort them out. And, uh, I'm gonna miss her. But today we're gonna go in here and drop these ashes and pay tribute to a great dog. She'll stay in stay in New Mexico. All right. So I hiked in here where I'm gonna leave Jazz. This is the last tree that she made. 
you can see where she she was a belly up tree dog like being up there on that tree and she would chew stuff out of her way it drove me nuts sometimes but uh never had it catch me in a two though normally because our trees back home aren't like this so i'm gonna try to get this camera set up here and we'll get these ashes out I don't know why that sucks. Anybody that says they're just dogs to us, you have no idea. All right, so let's dump those ashes. And I wanted to uh, say a little bit more there than I did, but I, I just couldn't at the time. It was just, um, I understand dogs and I, I've been on the farm my whole life. I understand what, and this isn't the first dog I've lost, but it's never easy. And um, you know, I just have a message for all the naysayers out there that try to take away what we do as houndsmen. You know, one of the favorite narratives of the anti-hunting community and the animal rights people is that we don't care about our dogs. And, um, we care about these dogs on a level that fur mamas will never understand. They travel thousands of miles with us. They sleep on the mountain with us if we've got to spend the night. Um, I've seen them go from high performance athletes to, um, you know, just lap dogs. Curl up next to you on the bed. When I traveled a lot with Jazz, on the uh, competition hunt circuit. I didn't leave her in the truck. I snuck her into a lot of hotels and she spent a lot of nights on the bed. And um, she was just special. She was a really special dog. And uh, I'm not gonna say once in a lifetime dog. Uh, you know, I, I hope there's more to come. And I know that her genetics live on. She's got a a great pup out there, a couple great pups up in Montana that are that are getting with it on Bear and Lion. And uh, Kevin, that Casey Stutzman has has those two. Look look for Rush and Girl that Casey has. Um, look for Big Country Junior that Kevin Hall has. Um, Mackie Man's just one king of the hunt with a jazz pup up in Michigan. And uh, Jonah Grog, and I can't remember Paul's, somebody else. Sorry, Paul. Can't remember your last name. One king of the hunt with a, with a jazz pup up there. So they're getting it done on big game and coons, raccoons. And uh, she's going to leave her mark. She's number six on the reproducers list right now. And I expect her to, uh, to climb, climb on that list, too, as these pups get older. Anyway... I'm going to sign off. I've got some trashy plots and uh, one jazz pup and a yog terrier. Tough.
out here in these mountains somewhere that uh, they took off on a little walkabout. So I'm gonna go catch up to them, see what they got. Hopefully it's a big long tail line. All right, so this tree right here, big tall evergreen sticking up out of the oak brush. That's where she, she treed that for the last time. So Jazz, that's where you're gonna stay. And I know you'll stay there until I see you again. This is Chris with the Houndsman XP Podcast, and this is Fair Chase.